All right. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry that I am not there with you today. Um, but you are going to keep learning about the amazing Sokotoa that you started learning about yesterday. Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So um, you are going to start by just practicing. In order to be able to use any of those ratios, you need to know which sides are opposite, which sides are adjacent, which sides are um, hypotenuses. So let's start with all the opposite sides. So he, I have to pay attention to where the angle is. So here's my angle. So there's my opposite side. Here's my angle. Here's my opposite side. Here's my angle. Here's my opposite side. So I'm going to label each of these as it told me to with a star. So here's my opposite side, my opposite side, my opposite side. Again, I'm following the path of where my angle is, and then I'm going across. So here's the opposite side. You do the next row, and then check with your, pause the video, and then check your answer. So here, 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 and here. So those are my opposite sides. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is label the adjacent sides. And the adjacent sides, remember, those are the sides that are next to the angle, but they are not the hypotenuse. So it might actually help you to start by labeling the hypotenuses first and then the adjacent sides. If you want to give that a try, you can. Um, but remember, the adjacent sides, which we're going to label with a heart, are next to the angle, but they're also going to connect to that right angle. Okay, so they're going to be between that angle and the right angle. So here's another adjacent side. Here's another adjacent side. Here's another adjacent side. Okay, and then keep checking your work. Okay, and then obviously the third side remaining is our hypotenuse. It is always across from the 90 degree angle. So here's my hypotenuse for each triangle. So remember, which side is adjacent, opposite? Um, those both depend on which angle we're referencing. So it said to reference angle theta. All right, so let's first practice a little bit of what we did yesterday. Um, and so it says find A. So one thing you need to know is that sometimes we call the sides that are across from angles with the same letter. So here's angle A. So side A is opposite it right there. So this is side A here. Similarly, this would be side C. This would be side B, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is just label where side A is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a ratio. So this, what's its relationship to this angle? Well, it's opposite this angle. So I have opposite. And then what about this one? Is it adjacent or is it hypotenuse? Well, it's across from that 90 degree angle, so it is hypotenuse. So then I think back to my Sokotoa. Which one is opposite over hypotenuse? There it is, it's sine. So I'm going to write my equation first before I solve anything. Sine of A, or I can say theta if I want to. It doesn't matter. They're both talking about the same angle. And actually, I'm not going to put A because I know what that angle is. It is 21.64295 is equal to the opposite side, A, that I don't know, over the hypotenuse side, which I do know, which is 12.55621. So this was my opposite side, this was my hypotenuse side, so I set up a sine equation. Then all I'm going to do is cross multiply. Well, 1 times A is A, and then I need to multiply this long number by this long number. And I'm going to type that into my calculator to do so, but one thing you didn't get to hear about yesterday, and so it's okay if you um, maybe didn't realize this yesterday, but is that the mode of your calculator is really important here. So everyone should hit this button that says mode right here. 
So this one, I'm, I'm trying to highlight it right there. So that says mode. And what you see is there's a lot of different modes that we can play with. I don't need you to touch any of them except for the radian degree mode. We need to change that. If it's in radians, that's not what we want. We want it to be in degree mode because this angle is in degrees. When you get to algebra two, you'll talk more about radians, um, but we're here just talking about degrees. So I want to select degree. Now I can say second quit and I can go ahead and type in what I want to type in. So my goal is I would like to multiply this long number by this long number. Um, and so when I do that, I'm going to do 12.55621 times sine of 21.64295. Okay, I close my parenthesis. So I'm multiplying those because I cross multiplied and it's actually going to give me my value. So it gives me 4.63 if I round to the nearest hundredth. So there is my side A. Go ahead and try the same, pause the video, try to follow that same process for this next triangle. It looks exactly the same, some different values, but I want you to give it a try. All right, now for question two, it says for, <coughs> excuse me, for each triangle below, find side C. So let's name what side that is. So here's side C, it's opposite of angle C, okay? Now, I want to talk about, oh, we know this angle right here, right? So let's think about what angle that is, okay? And this is side C over here for this triangle, right? Now, I know this angle. This side is the hypotenuse side. This side C is not opposite, right? It's touching that angle. So this side C is the adjacent side. So I'm thinking about my Sokotoa. Which one relates adjacent and hypotenuse? Here it is, it's cosine. So I'm gonna set up my equation. Cosine of the angle, so 21.64295, equals the adjacent side, so that's side C, I don't know that yet, over the hypotenuse, which I do know, 12.55621. Now, this is really, again, over one, and I can cross multiply. I can solve for C. So I'm gonna multiply this times this in my calculator. Let's see what I get. 12.55621 times, let's see, I'm gonna do um, cosine of 21.6. Four, two, nine, five. And I find out that my side C is 11.67 if I round to the nearest hundredth. Okay? So again, try out this one. Okay? See if you can follow that same process right here. You're trying to, again, name what these sides are and then choose your trig ratio Set up the equation first, and then you can solve. Pause the video, and then come back when you're ready. All right, let's take a look at this last one um, before we talk about our inverses. <coughs> so this says, for each triangle below, find side B. So let's name side B. Here it is across from angle B. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let's see here. This is our angle, theta, that we know. This side is adjacent to it. This side is hypotenuse. So again, I'm thinking about my adjacent to my hypotenuse. And where do I have adjacent and hypotenuse? Oh, it's that cosine again. So I'm going to set up an equation that says cosine of the angle... So cosine of 31.82818 equals the adjacent side, which I know is 7.15367. Oh, over the hypotenuse side, which I don't know, which is B. That's what I'd like to find. Okay. 
So what did I find? Well, I have an equation that I need to solve for B, right? Here's the thing that's a little more challenging here. I do need to cross multiply. When I cross multiply, I actually am not multiplying a number times a number yet. I'm multiplying a number times B. So when I cross multiply, I'm just going to put that B here. B times the cosine of 31.82818 equals, when I cross multiply this, 1 times 7.15. That just gives me the 7.15367. Sorry, I didn't quite give you guys enough room on this, um, but we'll just do our best. And then what do I want to do? Well, I really want to get B by itself. It's being multiplied by this cosine. Let's get rid of it by dividing by that cosine. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Divide by that cosine. Right, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And that's going to cross this out with this, and I'm just going to get what B is. Now, how do I figure out what is this huge thing? Well, I'm just going to plug it into my calculator. What is 7.15367? divided by cosine of 31.82818. That tells me side length B is 8.42, if I round to the nearest hundredth. So what's tricky about this one? Just the algebra here. When you cross multiply, this you can't just say, oh, I'm going to divide by B. Um, you don't want to divide by B, right? You want to cross multiply, and then you want to get B by itself, so you divide by this cosine. So just be cautious about how you get to that B um, by itself. Go ahead and try this one. Come Pause the video and come back when you're ready. All right. So let's take a look about inverses. So up until this point, we've been using our trigonometry specifically to solve for side lengths. We had a missing side that we wanted to know, right? That's what we've been doing. Well, now we would like to know the angle measure. We actually have not talked about a solving strategy yet that lets you solve for angles in our right triangles. Up until now, we've used 30, 60, 90. We've used the angles to identify a strategy but we've never had a strategy that will solve for the missing angles. That's what we're going to do today. So it asks us to find theta. So here's theta, here's theta, here's theta, and here's theta. So those are the missing thetas that we're going to solve for. <coughs> so the first thing I want to do is label the sides that I do know. And I want to label them as either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. So this side is opposite the theta. This side is the hypotenuse to the theta. Okay, now I'm going to ask myself which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, it's the sine function. So now I'm going to set up an equation. This step is just like our other step that we were doing before. We're going to say, okay, sine of, the only difference is I don't know what this value is, so I'm just going to say sine of theta equals the opposite side, which is 5.05633 over the hypotenuse side, which is 9.14749. Now, this is the part that is unusual or just new to us, right? We want sine to be by itself. But right now, it's inside this other function. Remember that this is not saying sine times theta. This is saying sine of theta. It's like having a square root of a number, right? It's not a multiplier. So I can't just like divide this away. It's not being multiplied. What do I use? I use what is called the inverse. So the way we notate this is sine to the negative 1 or cosine to the negative 1 or tangent to the negative 1. So what I can do is I can use sine inverse to undo that sine. It will get rid of it and just leave the theta for me. Now, how do I evaluate this in my calculator? Well, if you look over here where the sine is right here, 
right? I'm going to clear that because I don't want to actually take sine of sine of sine. If I press the second button before I press sine, I get the sine inverse. So I want to do sine inverse of this fraction, 5.05633 divided by 9.14749, end parenthesis. So notice how I have the sine inverse here. It's the sine inverse of this fraction. So I'm going to hit enter, and now it tells me, oh, look, my angle must be 33.56 degrees. And I solved for my theta. Okay, go ahead and try this one. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, and then you're going to do one more on your own. So this is the last one we're going to do together. If I take a look here, I have my theta. This side is adjacent to my theta. This side is the hypotenuse to my theta. So I think about, okay, well, what is a, you, what trig ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse? That's cosine. So cosine of my angle that I don't know should equal the adjacent side, which I do know, over the hypotenuse side, which I do know. How do I get rid of the cosine? I use cosine inverse. But if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So now I get theta equals, I'm going to do second cosine, so I get cosine inverse, and I'm going to do that fraction. Now, right now, this feels a little bit like math magic because I haven't been there to talk with you. So we get theta is 15.23 degrees about what's actually happening. What's actually happening is that all triangles that have the same angle measures are all going to have the same ratio of their adjacent and hypotenuse sides. That's because they're, going, they're part of the same family of triangles. We studied two family of triangles called our 30-60-90 and our 45-45-90 triangles, and we have those ratios memorized. Well, there's an infinite amount of triangle families, right? Because these thetas could be anything. So what does our calculator have? Essentially, your calculator has a huge list that it's referencing of what angle measures have what ratios. And so when we type in this ratio, here's the ratio of my two sides, what angle measure creates those ratios? It basically has this huge list from its family, from the different um, families of triangles. So that's what's happening. We'll talk more about that when, when we're back. Um, good luck. Go ahead and do that last problem before you turn it into your sub. Thanks. Have a great day.